This post concerns Hurricane Dorian, which presents no threat to Texas but which we are covering due to general public interest. For Houston, for the foreseeable future, we can expect hot days, low rain chances, and no taste of fall. Crossing over very warm seas and not having to battle much in the way of wind shear, Hurricane Dorian's maximum winds increased to 180 miles per hour on Sunday morning. As central pressures continued to fall, further intensification seems to be possible today. Unfortunately, as it is reaching peak intensity, Dorian is now beginning to cross over the northern Bahamas. Its crawling westward movement will prolong exposure on these islands to wind gusts of up to 200 miles per hour, very high seas, and heavy rainfall. Areas such as Freeport in the Bahamas will very likely see extreme levels of damage. Hurricane Dorian official forecast track at 10 a.m. Central Time Sunday. National Hurricane Center, beyond Monday, we still expect Dorian to make a northern turn as a trough of low pressure currently over the upper Midwest sweeps down and pulls the tropical system north. The ultimate track will depend on the timing of this trough, as well as any wobbles in Dorian's path over the next couple of days. These two factors will determine whether the coastal regions of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas escape with a near-miss on catastrophic conditions, which seems more likely at present, or face the brunt of Dorian's intensity. European Ensemble Model Forecast for Dorian WeatherNerds.org slash Space City Weather Dorian probably will maintain its Category 4 and Category 5 intensity for the next couple of days as it undergoes a period of eyewall replacement cycles when the inner eyewall weakens and then reforms. By Tuesday or so, as it begins to pull north and at least its outer bands begin to interact with the continental United States, it should begin a weakening trend. Let's block ads. Why? 